Are you satisfied with what the investigation has become over the past few months? Well, like I said, I won't be satisfied to justice come for Kendrick. We all know, the world know, that Kendrick was the victim of being murdered at school. Everyone knows that. So we won't be satisfied until someone is arrested. Kendrick Johnson's parents still looking for justice for their dead teenage son 14 months after his body was found rolled up in a gym mat in his South Georgia school. A federal grand jury has now issued subpoenas to a bunch of his former classmates and their parents. Investigators say Johnson died accidentally, but his parents suspect foul play. Victor Blackwell, our Victor Blackwell, has been all over this case and joins us here. Great to have you along with our dream team. Um, so you had an opportunity to speak with the U.S. attorney now? Yeah, we spoke with the U.S. attorney. It's been about four and a half months since he launched this investigation. And this is a major step in this investigation for Michael Moore, the uh, U.S. attorney for the Middle District of Georgia. We identified four students, at least four students, two students at Lowndes High School and one former and one current student at a neighboring school, Valdosta High School, there in uh, Lowndes County. And essentially, and uh, your dream team can talk more about this, but he's using this from our sources to get the investigation going. Uh, typically, the, the grand jury is to determine if there's probable cause to uh, charge someone with a but federal crime. This is crime. more of an investigatory grand Yes, jury. as a tool here. Okay, so subpoenas issued. What, what should we be thinking right now? Is it, is it just part of the investigation, or do you think they suspect something more here? Well, I believe they suspected something more from the beginning. That's why the federal courts got involved. And when they issue subpoenas, they will ask these people, what do you know? And they often ask broad-based questions. What do you know? What did you see? And then from there, they can ask follow-up questions to other people. Because once people are under subpoena, they're forced to tell the truth, and then they start naming other people who may know something, naming people who may have said something. Because hearsay is allowable in these hearings, in these types of cases. And that way they can get to what happened to this young man. Yeah. Tony, do you think, what happens, though, let's say one of the people who's been subpoenaed says, I don't want to talk. No, that's not. Here, here's the reality. I might incriminate myself. Well, then we go into a whole different situation here. Now you've got even more reason to go after this person and get information. What's happening here is this is a discovery method. Those of us in the legal world know that. You say discovery. Discovery. You're trying to get more information, and the problem for some levels for the federal government that's going in doing this, they're going backwards and uh, when time has gone away and a lot of information, a lot of time for things to have disappeared. The great thing about subpoena power is you can also do subpoena ducas tecum. You can say, I need you to bring this also with you. I need to be able to get these other items. You need to bring this stuff with you. Um, the issue here is that the more pressure you put on people, the more chances that if there are people who have a story together, more chances that story is going to break down. And now you've got the pressure on them. Okay, so what does the U.S. Attorney want to find out here? Well, there were four questions he identified when he launched this back on October 31st. We're going to put them up on the screen. I have them here. And these are the direct quotes from the news conference. What was the cause of Mr. Johnson's death? Was Mr. Johnson's death the result of a crime? If Mr. Johnson's death was the result of a crime, who committed that crime? And if a crime was committed, who has the jurisdiction to investigate and prosecute those responsible? This essentially, from what we understand, is an attempt to get an answer to the first three. Because if he determines, or if he finds through this discovery method, that his death was the result of foul play, simple foul play is not within federal jurisdiction. Right. That has to go back to the district attorney. Right. Now, when we spoke with him yesterday, uh, we grabbed him just as he was walking into the federal courthouse in Macon. Here's what Michael Moore told us. We're working methodically, and uh, you know sometimes we remember we're running a marathon and not a sprint. So we we're working on it. It's better that we get it right than we get it fast. So I'm uh, I'm uh, satisfied that uh, the FBI is moving forward with all deliberate speed and, and doing a fine job. And we know the FBI has an interviewed the coroner in this case. He's also had a conversation uh, with uh, the U.S. attorney, um, uh, the, the coroner there, Bill Watson. Also interviewed several students, uh, officials at the school. We know that no subpoenas have gone to personnel at the school district, the coroner's office, or the sheriff's office. But there was a subpoena for the original surveillance video from the school. That's now in the hands of the FBI. Locals, though, can't be happy with what's happening here because they ruled it one way, and now, oh, my goodness.